Work hard, rock harder. The show that reveals how to get your band the success it deserves. Join Blasco and me, Seth, as we break down how to get more fans, more money, and not get screwed doing it. Hello and welcome to a new episode of Work Hard, Rock Harder. Uh, I am Chris Seth Jackson, blogger over at howtorunaband.com. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately, uh, Blasco will not be able to join us for the next few weeks. He is super busy promoting his bands right now. So hopefully uh, we get through March and he'll be back to join us. So uh, Blasco, go kick some ass. Anywho, so I'm going to be hosting this thing and try to get this thing out on a weekly basis. I've been succeeding so far, so uh, best of luck to me to keep doing this. Got some video for this now. Uh, for those of you just listening to this, we, I upload this stuff up to YouTube as well, so you get to see my ugly mug and all the great uh, animation and graphics we have in the background here. See that? Oh, that's actually just a whiteboard that I, I hastily scrawl upon right before doing the show. <laughs> yeah. Anywho's, let's get on with it. Uh, first things first, I'd like to thank you for uh, subscribing to us on iTunes and giving us a rating. We are currently accepting five-star ratings. <laughs> All right, uh, that's an old joke. A whole bunch of podcasters do that. I should not regurgitate other people's jokes. We're taking one-star ratings. How about that? But anyway, I got a five-star rating here. Uh, this is uh, from Freak Baseman. And he says, this show is the real deal. There's nothing better than getting advice from two guys in different spectrums. A manager and renowned musician and a pavement-pounding DIY musician. This podcast helps new bands who think they know everything reevaluate their ways. Big ups, guys, and thanks for the tons of good ideas. Thank you, Freak Bassman, for listening. That is awesome. Yeah, um, if you leave your review, we're going to read it live here on the show. Yeah, so uh, leave a review, leave your band's name, and we'll give you your band, you and your band a shout-out on the show if you leave a good review on iTunes. And it doesn't matter what country you're from. Right now, I'm monitoring all the English-speaking countries, which is like New Zealand, Australia, UK, Canada, US. There's probably a couple others I'm leaving out, but uh, monitoring a few of those. So, if there's a country that is a uh, non-English-speaking that you would like that you're leaving a review for, please uh, send me an email at Seth at How to Run a Band dot com. Seth at How to Run a Band dot com. I did not enunciate that very clearly, but yeah, send me an email. And uh, let me know so we can read that review on the air. Awesome. Now on to the show. Uh, first, a uh, couple of things I've learned just recently I'm going to share with you before getting on to the merch booth stuff. It is called passion. And uh, it, it, it's really passion in a technical sense. And uh, there's two areas where I found that if you exert a little bit more passion, you get a big bang for your buck. First one is recording. If you just record and try to do everything technically correct, your passion does not shine through. You don't get that little extra bit that makes it great. You know, there's a good recording where everything's technically awesome, but it's not great. So what I tried to do just recently in recording is I was going through the motions, and then after I got warmed up a little bit, I tried to put my brain into that hyped-up situation, the what the song was about, pretending I'm more live, playing it in front of an audience, and try to let the passion of what I was trying to sing come out, and immediately different. There was a difference on the recording. The guy came through and was like, "Yeah, that's a keeper. Do it exactly that same way for the next take." So that's what I did for the rest of the thing until my voice wore out. Ah, I gotta take more voice lessons. But yeah, um, I did just added some passion to it. Just got into it, let my body move a little bit more, and it's important to let your body move when you get into it because that just show it. It, it adds something. And it doesn't matter if it's your voice or getting on your bass guitar or drums or whatever. You know, it, getting the technical part out, that's called rehearsal. You don't do that in the studio. You get that shit banged out in your rehearsals day in, day out. You do it on your shows, get all the weird shit shaken out. So when you go to re you record, you're not rehearsing shit. You're just doing it. You're banging it out. You're just fucking, you can concentrate on nuance. Like making it sound extremely good, not just getting the notes out. 
So, yeah, throw some passion into it, man. If you're not feeling the right, if you're not feeling your recordings are sounding correct or you're not feeling the way they should, just fucking throw some passion into it, man. Like, throw out a book on, like, playing it perfectly and start playing it passionately. See how it works for you. It might not work for you. You could be Meshuggah where you have to pre-program everything on a drum machine. You know, that there's no passion there. So, who knows? I'm not saying Mush <laughs> I'm going to get a bunch of hate mail. I love Meshuggah. All right, come on. I'm just giving those guys a hard time. Any band that has to practice six months on something they recorded just to play it live, they get my respect. So, anyways, there's more than one way to do it. I'm just saying passion is working for me. Go try it out. Uh, second thing regarding passion is, uh, and this goes into, uh, kind of goes into another aspect. This is outside of recording. This is actually playing a live show and showing a little bit more passion. This is more of a small stage tweak when you're playing live. And uh, I try to be very animated, try to be very active and energetic when I'm on stage. And... Uh, I've transitioned from just being a bassist to also singing and playing bass guitar. And yeah, when I'm not singing, I'm, you know, being energetic, trying to, you know, run around the stage a little bit as much as I can without winding myself too much. I'm getting fat and I need to exercise. Anyway, um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I found that I was just being kind of static when I'm actually singing. I'm just, you know, I got the microphone in front of me and I'm just staying in one spot and singing and singing and singing. And so I was like, you know, I need to throw a little bit more passion into this. I need to be a little bit more over the top. Got to just uh, drive myself a little bit more. And so I just started like moving around. It's just a small change, just moving around, kind of feeling the music and like keeping the mic there. You know, it's a little bit more concentration. You know, I just moving with the music and but let my body kind of show a little bit more getting out of that rigid one little spot i'm standing in getting rid of the fear of looking stupid and just moving around with the microphone and it's a little bit of a challenge keeping that microphone dead center but thing is the way it comes across to everybody even the small changes i wasn't doing a lot but the small changes of how my body was moving just immediately last two shows i've done that Everybody's been coming up like, oh my god, the amount of energy you're showing on stage is phenomenal. They're just all going on about the energy that they see on stage and how much energy I'm projecting. Like how I can go from like just being like talking to them before stage and being at zero energy level to just being over the top. And it's just some small tweaks you can do. And it's not a lot. So if you're a singer and you got the instrument going, or even if you are just a singer and you're just freaking standing there, man, try moving your body a little bit. It also helps get the passion out. And that's how, here's the overlap of passion is, you got to, the passion that you have for your music, sometimes you need your, your whole body to get it across to the audience. And when you move your body, sometimes it helps get those, that note out, that it helps get, it's not the note, you can play a note technically correct without moving, but it's not the technical correctness, it's the passion behind the note. And the passion comes across. It's not something you can train on. It's something you have to express. So try it out. You know, if you feel like your shows are a little bit underwhelming and you need a little bit of extra edge, try just using your body a little bit more. You know, you don't need to be leaping off the stage, but, you know, just putting your body into it as you're singing. If you feel like you're just standing in one spot, a good way to check this is just to record yourself live. Like get a little shitty camera ask a friend or whatever and just record yourself live and go look at the video after you played. You know, ask yourself. It's like, am I just standing there? You know, how's the audience reacting? Make sure whoever's uh, taping it or if you set up the camera ahead of time, get the audience in there. See how they're reacting. So, yeah. Try to throw some passion in it. Move your body. See how it works. Let me know. <laughs> All right, now on to uh, something I learned last night at a show. Um... Just played a show, and I didn't announce it from stage because I didn't have a chance to practice it ahead of time first. But I should have announced it from stage because it just was very simple to do. So it, here's what it is. It's recording your live show. And selling it, burning it on, yeah, burning it on CD and selling it right afterwards. And so this means it's an extra piece of revenue for your merch booth. And it's something that's unique. Not many. I haven't seen any band do it. 
Maybe the Pixies do something like this, but it's so easy to do. It was mind-numbingly easy. And I did it in a loud bar without any, like, able to hear what editing I was doing, all right? So I just had my laptop. All I could see was waveforms. I chopped the waveforms, and then I listened to it on the ride home, and I did it perfect. I got it right at the beginning of the show and chopped it off right at the end of the show. Got everything. And uh, what I used was, uh, I love this thing. I'm going to pitch it to death. I'm going to put my affiliate link to it in this because I just think everyone should own one of these guys. It's called a Tascam DR40. It's a personal field recorder, or it's just a portable recorder is what it is. It's got great little microphones on it that you can uh, adjust to however you want. But um, this thing, you can just dial stuff in really quick, pop it up there, record your show, and it sounds phenomenal. And you can record it right in, I recorded it like 16... <sighs> 16-bit 44.1, which is perfect for burning a CD. Recorded that. I went through. All I did was, like, chop out the, um, just let it run while we were playing the show. And it, it'll record for about an hour. So if you have a half-hour show, you can set it 15 minutes up ahead of time. And then go do your show. And then 15 minutes afterwards, you can get broken down stage. Then go turn the damn thing off. So it's really easy to deal with that way. Um, and even if you do go over and recording, it actually will seamlessly keep recording. It'll just start a new file, but like instantly start a new file. So you don't have that like a big break between things. So if you have like a two hour show, it'll just smoothly break, but it'll require more editing if you're doing a two hour show. But yeah, if you have a, the normal half hour gig for a band, this thing is perfect. Otherwise you might need someone to assist you. But so what I did, get off stage, I have a bunch of blank CDs, like a little white CDs, like they have a the white face on them for printing. I have a whole bunch left over from my old band. So I grab those, grab some sleeves, and then just take a Sharpie and you just write out what your set list is on it. You know, write it with your thing and just put like a number on it to make it collectible. And, you know, let people know. It's like, hey, you buy this, you're not going to hear it anywhere else type thing. And uh, you have something to sell. If you don't have an album to sell right now, which I don't, we got some uh, singles on Bandcamp and iTunes, but we don't have anything physical to like music to sell at the merch booth and people are asking for it. So hell give them a unique experience saying, this is the show that you were at sell the show that they were at. You can just pop it right there on CD. Uh, it, all to do was chop out the waveform without hearing it, add some compression to bump up the sound a little bit, not a lot of compression and then burn it to CD. And what you could also do is just a, uh, convert it to mp3. I use this free software called Audacity. I'm using it right now to record this, in fact. And Audacity is free. Works on both Mac and PC. And, uh, yeah, you use that. You got free software. It'll also convert it to mp3 for you. And you can, uh, I don't know, I'm going to look into getting those little USB uh, jump drives. And, you know, get one or two, and then start slow. And see, maybe burning them off onto that. Maybe with a couple of other, my already uh, pre-recorded stuff, you know, and put like a little thing. It's like, here you go. Here's, you know, pay what you want for, I, I'm doing, I'm doing pay what you want with my band. But, you know, pay for this. This is a unique experience. You got this on a jump drive or a burnt CD. And yeah, there you go, right there. And just something else you can sell at your merch booth that's unique. And it's uniquely you. And you can give it a try. I, I'm about to try it more with my band. Now that I realized it's that simple to do, you got to be focused on what you're doing. You got to get off stage quick. You got to get your stuff out of the way quick. And you got to start setting that thing up at the merch booth fast and start getting it done. You, you can't fuck around and talk to all your friends and all that other good stuff. You got to get to your merch booth and boom, do it. Set it up. But you should be getting to your merch booth anyway. So right after you get off stage, get to your merch booth. Okay, having a sip of my coffee here. So that's uh, tip number one, using the Tascam DR40 to record a CD and have something live right there dynamically generated at your show. That's something unique I don't see a lot of bands doing. Jump on it right now, start doing it. I'm going to, uh, I guess in the near future, I'm going to run a, uh, probably create a YouTube video to show how to use the Tascam DR40. 
There's a couple quick settings you can do on there that will adjust the peak levels, and it just works flawlessly. It's beautiful. I love that thing. It's great for doing your rehearsals. It's great for you know, when you're getting your ideas out. Great for live shows. Great if you want to go record your favorite band at a live show. It's perfect. It's beautiful. It's awesome. Anyway, on to the next thing. And it's more uh, tips. I, I was just noticing some things lacking my own merch booth last night. First off, have a damn merch booth. There's so many bands that I see. Like, I wanted to buy an album from a band last night. No merch booth. None whatsoever. Like, I played with a band. I thought they were excellent. And they looked like they had good merch on that they were wearing that said their band's name on the back of their uh, thing. They were called Kled. K-L-E-D, local Seattle band. They had uh, these cool jumpsuits with, like, this weird stick figure chasing kids on the back. It was kind of weird, creepy, but it was unique. And uh, I was like, man, looks like something cool. But they had no merch booth, no CDs for sale, nothing. I didn't know what to do. It drives me crazy. It's people, bands complain about not having money. And they're going all crazy about this crowdfunding stuff. To fund their albums. You know what I've been doing? I've been selling merch and playing shows. The money from that goes right back into recording an album. That simple. I have merch. I stay with the merch booth until the end of the night. Or until it's obvious and no one else is going to buy shit. But I stay there until the end of the night. And that's that's it. You get your merch money from your merch booth. That's, that's your hub. That's where you should be getting people from the show to come over there to your merch booth and hang out. That's where the party should be, at your merch booth. That's where your fans should be hanging out and talking about shit. You can talk all night and network with everybody. It's fine. Just get them over to your merch booth and do it, man. That's the, where the party's at. And get people to buy some shit. Have that stuff showcased, you know? Get your t-shirts up there. Get your fucking shit up there. Put things up for sale. Put your logo up there so people know it's your merch booth. And let people know you have a merch booth from stage. And say, get back there as soon as we get our stuff packed up. We're going to be right back there. That's where the party's at. And tell them what you got for sale. If you got something unique, you know, like, hey, I just burnt a CD of the live show. Come get it. Or, you know, we got beer koozies that everyone seems to just go crazy for. They love them. And, uh, yeah, as you add things on, you know, each show you should, or every couple months you should be adding a new item of some sort to make keep it fresh, keep it new, and for your current fans to keep buying something new. But, yeah, have a damn merch booth. Don't be lazy. I know what it is that you're lazy. You just got there, you worked a hard day's work, whatnot. You just don't want to deal with putting up a merch booth. You think someone else in your band's going to deal with the merch booth. Just That's your first thing. You get into the club, you think, where am I going to set up the merch booth? You get there early so you can grab that table, you can grab that area. You know, Make sure you have your own table for your merch booth because some places just don't have an available table. You have your own table. You create your own merch booth if no merch table if no one else if there's nothing else to do there do it yourself don't let anything get in the way of you setting up your merch because that's your lifeline that's that's where that's the whole rest of your show is your merch booth you know you get up there you fucking play your show and then that's the hustle the hustle begins like you get over to the merch booth you let people know you got shit and that's what I need to work on I need to get my hustle game up more because man it really helps when you get into the studio and you're paying by the hour man having those shows that you played for the last few months pay for it all is a relief because you know it, it's a lot of money to get in the studio and do stuff i mean it's cheaper nowadays than it was back in the day when everyone charged you seven thousand dollars just to step in the damn place but it's still pricey unless you're doing it yourself and i think that's even pricier just from your own personal time and also inexperience from actually making a real album but anyway on to a couple other things about the merch booth, other than just have a damn merch booth. Is a I had my merch booth set up in a dark corner. Unfortunately, it just was not lit up well enough to attract attention. So one of the I mean I had a, a couple little tiny LED lights that I set up to like illuminate things on my merch stand, but it wasn't enough. And what I should have done is I have all this little track lighting. That really is stands out. The track lighting you just put around the merch booth. I use like some cool little shelves that I just zip tie together. And then you can put the 
track lighting, which is really flexible around it. Don't use Christmas lights. Christmas lights break, and they turn into little shards that get into your fingers as you're reaching into your box of merch. Don't use Christmas lights. They break, and they suck. But the track lighting thing's in this little tube, so it's flexible, stays in one place. It doesn't break up when you put it in your merch booth. It's much better. It doesn't cost much more. And, yeah, so put that around your merch booth. That's what I've been putting around mine, and I should have done it last night, and I noticed, looking from a distance, looking at my merch stand, it wasn't noticeable. you got to be noticeable. It's just like being on stage, just like being online. If you want people to notice you, you have to be noticeable. So you got to do something that's unique, fire up some extra lights if you're in a dark corner, make sure that shit is lit. So um, a couple things to help out with that, other than the track lighting, is make sure you bring your own power strip, to plug in all the things that you need to plug in and then bring a big ass 100 foot extension cord 100 foot extension cord so anywhere in that bar or club or venue that you need to plug in you can plug in and you know worst comes to worst you have bring a whole bunch of lead lights they're not the best at lighting up in a dark venue but they're better than nothing plus the lead lights help when people come up to sign up for your email list they can just like adjust the lights real quick you need light for the email list. If you have a LED light for nothing else, just go get a cheapo LED light. And make sure it shines down on your email sign-up list. So that should be there regardless of anything else. Your, your merch booth isn't only to sell. It's also to get people onto your lists. You get people onto your list. You can, uh, yeah, your lists, that's a whole other episode. But lists are how you build your long-term fan base. And you get your money over the long term. That's how you build up your thousand true fans, as they say. I don't like regurgitating other people's crap. But um, especially some things that are unfounded. But anyway, uh, you get those fans. One fan over the lifetime of your band could be worth hundreds of dollars, if not thousands of dollars. So you need to get them on your list to keep in contact with them. Very simple thing. But uh, I was thinking about this last night. I'm actually kicking my own ass. Because I use another service called, um, what is it? It's called Fan Texter. And what it is is an uh, SMS service. So on your cell phone, you sign up for this. You text a little thing. And uh, next thing you know, you're on, just like on an email list, you're on a text messaging list. So whenever you have a show, you just send schedule out a message, and it sends it to everybody. It's like, hey, there you go. We're having a show tonight. You send it at like 4 p.m. during that day, and it's like, just give them a little text message. Explosion, my band, having a show tonight. It's really cool. I like it. You can schedule the messages out. It's really fun. Uh, there's The software still needs a little bit more updating, but it's getting there slowly. So it's really cool. Fantexture.com, I highly recommend it. They have a really nice pricing structure. They actually lowered the price from when I first started out. Like So to help the more broke musician, I think it's like $6.99 a month. And yeah, it's really great because you can use QR codes to get more people on your text messaging list or you can just from the stage tell people hey uh, text message this digit and use it like like mine for my band is 63566 and you text message SHIP S-H-I-P to get on our text messaging list I wouldn't recommend you doing it right now <laughs> but unless you're actually going to go out and see my band you're just going to be wasting my money so don't do that that'll piss me off <laughs> anyway um so, yeah, you get on this text messaging list, but uh, unfortunately it doesn't automatically know what city you're from. It tries to guess from your phone number, but, you know, people go to different cities with their phone numbers. So, you can't broadly advertise it without at least having a reply. You can set an auto-reply message to tell people, hey, tell me what city you're in. And uh, if you have people, I guess one of the things you can do is, like, if they're not telling you which city it is, just blindly text message them whenever you have a show, wherever. But um, one of the things I did is just set it up for particular shows and have a different autoresponder message to get people to come on to the show. I am blabbing. I did not want to go on about fan texter. But anyway, if you've never used it before, it's a cool way of getting people onto your text messaging. Then You can go through strategies. I think I have another... Yeah, I have another blog post about how to use fan texter. Actually, uh, I think I talked to the CEO of fan texter. And he went over all the services, how to use it. So I'll link to that in the show notes. That I remember. Link to that in the show notes. 
But the important part of this that I was getting at, that I just realized I'm just kicking my own ass about for not doing last night, or at a lot of my other shows, is having the damn QR code up on my merch booth right there to, for people to get on our text message list. But then I thought about it. QR codes can lead to anywhere, any website you want. I should also have a landing page for my email list so people can just get on their cell phone and sign up for my damn email list. I mean, why bother them trying to write something dark in the club when they can just get on their cell phones? Everyone has a cell phone. They just click on the QR code and it immediately takes them to a site to sign up for an email list. And they get something free if they sign up for the email list. I don't know. So whatever incentive you want. QR codes. Have one QR code here. Get on a text message list. Another QR code here. Get on to our uh, email list. Or you can combine them. I don't know. There's things you can do that uh, beyond the scope of this podcast. I can probably help you out with that if you want to send me an email. Seth at howtorunaband.com. But uh, yeah, there's other things you can do. But have that stuff there. QR code at your thing to get people to sign up from their smartphones. Mobile is the way to go, baby. Put that shit on people's smartphones. Get it there directly. So, yeah, as soon as I can figure out how to record that live show and get it someone's smartphone right afterwards, that would be the shit. But, uh, yeah. Not quite there technolo- technologically yet. But maybe after the show, anything's possible. During the show, not so much. Um, yeah, so that's all I got to say right now about merch booths, man. Keep, keep them well. One, have one. Keep them well lit. Three, uh, have some QR codes. For people to sign up with their cell phones. Cell phones backlit so they can easily like type in their stuff. And when you get people to write down their uh, information, it's in a dark bar. People are usually drunk. It comes out to be gibberish half the time and you don't get the right email address. So sometimes it helps just to have the little cell phone. And uh, yeah, um, I guess beyond everything else is Stay at your merch booth all night. Bring people there to your merch booth. That's where the party is. Because that's where your money's at. You don't need to start an Amanda Palmer Kickstarter campaign for a million dollars to fund your damn album if you're just intelligently taking your money from your merch booth and your shows and feeding it back into your band. Boom. There you go. There's no crowdfunding needed. You're already crowdfunding by getting people to buy your shit. So... That's my two cents. <laughs> All right, so that's about the end of this. I'm going to talk really briefly about a webinar that's coming up on Thursday. So I'll try to get this podcast out by Wednesday. But uh, I have a webinar. Uh, I, I've talked to a few musicians, and uh, I don't know, maybe you listening here, you might have been one of the musicians I talked to. But I talked to quite a few musicians about their core problems with their bands. And one of the problems, one of the first problems, is really organizing, uh, getting their bandmates. Their bandmates don't seem, usually there's one person in the band that does all the work. And then their other bandmates are floundering, not doing the work, not caring about the work, or don't know what to do, or just not helping. And everything ends up falling on the shoulders of one person in the band, which ends up burning them out and driving them crazy. You know, uh, So I've developed something that helps out with that. It's not guaranteed, you know. Sometimes drummers are just a lost cause. <laughs> I love making fun of drummers, especially since I know my drummer listens to this. <laughs> Anyways, it's a um, that's one thing it, it helps address. But the cool thing about it, it's called rapid band development. The really cool thing is I've taken principles from uh, the agile development community. That's a software community, where it's where all these startups now that are like popping out cool new software really fast that are highly focused on their customers. They're using these new rapid techniques for delivering software that is really high quality software very quickly. And uh, it's called agile development. It's also taken from rapid development. So I've taken those principles since I've worked in the software industry for quite a while now. I've taken those principles and applied it to bands because I've seen no band out there has a guiding structure to deliver to their fans or to deliver their promotions or to deliver or organize themselves in general to get things done. So what I've done is I've taken these principles and distilled it for bands to use. It's free software that you can use to organize this stuff. It's called Trello, Trello Trello.com. You want to check it out. 
feel free to go ahead and check it out. Uh, Trello.com, I teach you how to use it with the agile principles that all these startups are using and major companies are starting to adopt because it's awesome stuff. It keeps you focused, keeps you getting stuff done. It, a lot of people like say, oh, next year we'll get this on Earth. At the end of the year, we'll have this done. This thing is not like that. It, it focuses on getting things done quickly right now and help get your bandmates on board. It's principles of understanding your bandmates, what their specialties are, and it gives you these quick ways of identifying what the strengths and weaknesses of your bandmates are and how to assign work out to them. And also letting them know what work you're doing. And that's usually hard to get across. You know, it's extremely difficult to get across when people don't know what you're doing. You're behind your computer doing all this stuff. You're being the guy in the band. No one else knows what you're doing. So they don't even know that you're doing all this work. And they don't know how to help. So what I'm going through is ways of getting your band members on board, getting them helping you out, organizing yourself. So even if they don't help out, because that's never guaranteed, but even if they don't help out, you have a way to organize it yourself because you're overwhelmed with crap to do for your band. It's just the way it is. You got all this stuff on Facebook. You got to book shows. You got to do photography. You got to keep up with this crap I just told you about, fan texture, and learning how to do that Tascam DR40. Um, yeah, you got all this stuff, but you know you need to prioritize things and you need to get stuff done. And you need to know what is the most important thing you need to focus on that has the biggest impact for your band. You can get distracted by all this tons of shit and not be focusing on the right things. So what I'm going to help you with during this webinar is how to focus on the right things. And organize yourself, organize your band, and do great things for your fans because the core of this, of everything you're doing is to make it magical for your fans. And that's what we try to help you do. Get to your fans faster, help organize your shit so you're not going in crazy, and hopefully get your slacker stoner bandmates on board to help you out and help take some of the burden off your shoulders. Or at least let you know the repetitive things that you can do that you can hire somebody else to do. If you're that important in your band that you need to hire people, then you definitely need to... This is something, this is the structure of your band. Once your band starts making money, you need to know how to organize things and deal things out to other people effectively. It's not going to be the way that you want it when you deal things out to other people, but you need to start learning how to delegate things. So once you actually start making enough money with your band, you could start hiring people on. You know, it could be at first just like one-off tasks. You go to services like Odesk or Elance, but you need to know how to delegate, how to take your process and make some, let someone else do it. So that's hopefully something to help organize your thoughts in this webinar. Organize the way you do things. Organize your madness and put it into a repeatable, uh, a repeatable automated system that you can always just pop out and you can share with others and help them do it for you. So yes, this webinar is happening on Thursday, and that is the date Thursday, <laughs> the twenty-first, and that's going to go on from uh, six p.m. Pacific time until whenever. So it's going to be an hour's worth of training, followed by however long is needed Q&A session about anything you want. You can just ask questions, and I'll stay on while everyone still has questions. What's more, you also get the recording of this, which will be the screen capture of the entire webinar with all the training. So you don't need to get distracted trying to follow along with Trello as you're doing it. But you, know, you get the recording for this. You get the Q&A session. You also, right now, I'm gonna, I didn't say this when I first released it, but I'm also going to give you a copy of my ebook, uh, this Book Your Band, the Booking and Show Promotion Guide. So you'll get a, a bonus of that for free by joining this webinar. So the webinar itself is $20. That occurs on Thursday. And... The recording will be available to everyone afterwards. I'm going to be selling the recording of the webinar, but the recording will be more expensive and it will not have the free, the ebook to go along with it. The Book Your Band ebook, which is worth $17. So if you get in now for $20, you get 
the whole shebang. You get your questions answered. You get great high quality training for something that is I've not seen anybody else on the internet do. Nowhere. There's no one else teaching rapid band development right now. It's something new I've developed that I've been working with my band over the past month or two, and it is amazing. So $20, get all this great value. I want to put a link at the bottom of this. Sign up, and I will see you on Thursday. And if you can't make it on Thursday, then uh, the recording will be available for $25 afterwards. But you won't get all those cool nifty deals. Anywho, I am Seth from HowToRunABand.com. Feel free to send me an email at Seth at HowToRunABand.com. And uh, I will be seeing you again shortly. Remember to rock the merch booth. Your merch booth is your lifeline. Do not ignore it. <laughs> All right, so, uh, yeah, I'll talk to you again next week if you're not at the webinar. And uh, take care. Goodbye. We want to hear from you. If you have a question that you want us to answer on the show, give us a call at 765-507-9474. Again, that's 765-507-9474. We can make a whole show out of your question. To learn more about us, visit Blasco at blogandestroy.net and visit me, Seth, at howtorunaband.com. And remember to work hard and rock hard. Check recording. One, two, check. Look at this. This is my movie recording. This is Audacity recording. It's all recording. We're good to go. All right. <clears throat>